What's good, you YouTube? It's me, boy Squid, back with another Squid Ale. So, OCG, they are crazy. They had a, a no ban list tournament. Yep, another one of these things that happened today on April Fool's Day, you know, just to go with the madness. And apparently this was an online tournament that took place today. It was hosted by an OCG site called Tonamo.com. And today it happened. We got the results. We saw what the heck actually did well in a no ban list unlimited style format, which means you can use three of everything. Yes, the thumbnail did not lie, guys. You can literally use three Pot of Greed, three Graceful Charity, three Painful Choice, three Vantage the Emptiness, anything in the entire game. There is no restriction. Nothing is banned. And here is what happened. So... You guys can see on Twitter, we have the top four decks. Number one is Cash Tira. Holy smokes. Now, for those of you guys that do not know, we previously featured some results from similar tournaments on this channel where they had unlimited tournaments in the OCG. And generally, we know one thing. Tier limits are absolutely busted, even in that format. They are just the best deck of all time, even with no ban list. Nope, it's not some degenerate FTK deck that you would think like Exodia or some kind of magical explosion FTK deck. Apparently, hand traps just keep those decks in check and tier limits are just the raw and by far best deck but cash tira can also play because they're anti-tier limits you're playing three copies of dimension shifter and when you boost your deck with other powerful things like three graceful charity three pot of greed three main deck dimension fissure because they already knew tier limits were on the horizon for this event and three giant true net very very interesting like guys this is what the format has devolved to when you have three of everything there's a lot of paradoxes in that format where hand traps the existence of powerful hand traps have made it so FTK decks are not a thing, but we are just grinding much like how regular modern Yu-Gi-Oh would be if everything was, you know, pre ban list when we still had three Rise Heart and stuff. Like, yeah, this deck was more or less playable in the TCG, minus, of course, the busted cards. But you can see how much of the power level has just shook that format with three of every broken card, and yet you're only seeing cards like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity being the ones played out of the plethora of broken ban cards that we have already in the entire game card pool. And yeah, there's just so many good ones, you know, obviously Confiscation, Forceful Central cards like that but nope apparently you just want draw power you want to access as many cards as you can and then just start locking your opponents down by making multiple rise hearts we are also playing a copy of elder entity as a thought with a, i don't even know how the heck this is made but i'm just looking at it now and thinking wow this could potentially be very very vile if there's a way to get at thought onto the table I mean, guys, do you know how they're actually making Athathot? Let me know in the comments below. I would imagine some combination of Rise Heart, but I don't even see the other guy here. So how is this actually coming out on our opponent's turn to make it so that we can actually... I don't know, but all I know is we're locking our opponent for multiple cards, and it's very consistent because we have three of everything. And yeah, Shifter obviously being such a broken card. This is a deck that came first place, 43 card, Cash Tirai. Amazing. Second place was another cash tira deck this is just so shocking this one is a little bit different than the other one we're just devolving heavily but we are maxing out on the three pot of greed and the three graceful charity three shifter of course shifter's just insane no max c surprisingly but we are playing traps instead main deck red reboot to i assume go second you know just leverage and hope that you can somehow push through powerful traps that are in the format like imperial order as well as vanity's emptiness one copy very nice know that imperial order is at three as well so we decided to play a third copy of imperial order in the form of vanity's emptiness instead obviously going still for the lock here with the diablosis as well as the multiple shangri Raz. I assume this deck is very, very powerful. And of course, Shifter is just such an insane card going second. But the three Giant Trunade is what shook me because we're playing Giant Trunade in both of these cash decks. So apparently, I would imagine if you're going second, you Giant Trunade everything back. This does not trigger any of the Tier Limits cards like Tier Limits Soliac. doesn't trigger any of their searches. And then from there, you can maybe push past their board and then lock them out entirely. So very, very interesting to see how, you know, like Cash Tier has taken the first two spots. And... This is different from the previous tournaments that we've had where tier limits were just among the top eight, just taking the entire plethora of the top eight. And uh, previously, when we had a unlimited banlist tournament, last time, Victory Dragon was very, very powerful. And that was seen in, I think, the top five or six decks among the top eight. We're all making use of Victory Dragon because you can actually easily make it so you control dragons by using your extra deck toolbox like 
Ripperdokius, who allows you to change things into dragons. You can make LP and Pisty very easily, summon out Broltar. Broltar's effect discards a card, allows you to search for Victor Dragon, and you contribute the onboard dragons to summon Victor Dragon, swing for game. Note that in the OCD, you cannot actually surrender uh, unless both players agree to it, meaning Victor Dragon connects and it will actually end the match on the spot. So whoever effectively wins game one can hold their opponent hostage and not kill them until they assemble the cards needed for Victor Dragon, then win the match. But apparently in this tournament, Victory Dragon is nowhere to be seen, so I'm not sure if they decided that was just too inconsistent, if the metagame is actually evolving for a tournament like this, but very interesting to see. Moving on, top three, or uh, top four rather, we have Tier Limits. Yep, Tier Limits and all the Rage. Now, the one thing that actually surprised me the most about this deck is the absolute zero copies of Graceful Charity, zero copies of Pot of Greed, and zero copies of Painful Choice. Um, if we saw the previous tournaments, a lot of players did forego playing Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed because they realized those cards were just not as good as Painful Choice. Painful Choice is insane in this deck. Guys, you literally foolish barrel five cards from your deck. It does not have to be monsters. Five cards, and then you add one card to your hand. It's insane in a deck like this. You basically mill out your entire deck and win. But nope, they decided we are not playing that. Instead, we are maxing out on terraforming. One copy of Planet Pearl Orion, one copy of the Kestira Rathos, I guess for consistency reasons. No instant fusion, none of the broken spell cards. We're just maxing out and hedging to go second because going first, we're already consistent enough that we're probably already winning. This just shows the sheer power of tier limits because if you look at this deck recipe, it's literally no different than what tier limits were at their core peak in the tier zero format, right? Like we were playing three copies of Pearl of Rhino with one copy of the field spell, obviously none of the cast here stuff, but they later came out. But look, everything else is like max power tier limits without any banned cards, right? Like, look, we have three Herald of the Orange Light, the names are all at three more or less, the three Max Three, the three Shufflers, the three uh, Millers. Um, and you know, this deck does not look that deviated from you would not be able to distinguish this from like a regular tier limits deck if you just look at the main deck more or less besides like the terraformance right which is what shook me the most when i saw this because i was like this is just a regular tier limits deck so is tier limits that broken that it could have competed with no ban list decks at the time like a year ago that's just crazy but if you look at the extra deck it gets a little better than that because of the existence of uh well shockmaster level of a chain and of Sprite Elf. Obviously, there's no side deck, so I'm curious if this is actually a best of one format. Uh, that would be very, very toxic in GG Generate. In fact, that would explain why Victory Dragon was not played, because if it's best of one, there's no point playing Victory Dragon. So that honestly, to me, would explain that entirely, that this was just best of one. Maybe that just makes more sense. Guys, if you can read Japanese, let me know, because I cannot understand a word of Japanese. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments. Hey guys, before we dive in, I actually wanted to share with you a product that I'm actually selling. Yes, a bit of a shameless plug, but what you're seeing on screen is Squiddy's Masterclass. So these are gonna be a series of guides that go very in-depth for a particular deck. And this one that I've completed so far is the Snake Eyes Fire King. You can see here, we talk about deck building, going into the optimal end boards, playing into hand traps. So basically every hand trap where you get hand trapped at a certain choke point we're going to talk about uh, and some general tips about the deck we go very very detailed we included a bunch of replays from dueling book actually embedded here so when you get uh, hand trapped at a certain location what you're supposed to do to adapt and then the best ways that you can actually play into those hand traps so this is actually available now uh, the full slides are actually over 60 slides alongside a three hour recording of myself actually going over these slides and just talking about the plays and the deck in general so if you guys want to up your competitive game as a Fire King Snake Eye player or just learn how to beat the deck, uh, this is definitely a good resource for you, I would say. So I'm pricing this at $20 USD, which is a little steep, but I guarantee you guys there's lots of value in this and uh, the payment allows me to spend time on this and actually bring you guys more metal relevant content and uh, bring it to you at a high competitive level. So if you guys are interested, there's a link below in the description. Now, that being said, I will definitely be still making a lot of free stuff on YouTube, talking about a lot of decks in here and there. But if you guys want exclusive of content that's very very detailed then this is definitely something you guys can check out other than that let's dive back in this video thanks a lot for taking the time to uh, listen to this and then the last top four deck is another two limits deck as you can see with full power again very very similar to the one we just saw with no powerful band cards like pot of greed grace for charity painful choice instead we're playing giant trunade as well i guess trunade is just insanely good going second against tears because you just shuffle back soliac and whatever the heck else is on the board you don't trigger anything by popping it no scream no soliac searches 
One copy of Instant Fusion, obviously going to kick out those. They are playing Cyberstein as well, which can be brought back off Sprite Elf. We could actually do this in the tier zero format in tiers as well. Going into X tier zero and just like a bunch of degenerate combos have ensued. Notice that they're not playing Lava Low Chain or Shockmaster. So it seems the entirety of tier limits is already powerful enough as is that you don't need broken cards to hurt the consistency. And yeah, this deck already plays on your opponent's turn as long as they don't have something like Shifter. It's just insanely good. One having this milk could just mean the game. And they're not even playing tier cash, which is crazy. This is just old time tier limits at its core. So guys, what do you think about this tournament so far? I mean, I just love the unlimited tournaments. I have not yet seen uh, what the other decks are. I don't know how many people entered. I think around 64, between, you know, 64, somewhere or, or among that number. <laughs> so, guys, if you know more about this tournament, let me know. And I hope they have more because this is really, really interesting seeing that uh, effectively, <laughs> you know, banned cards do not really matter. Tier limits are just that degenerate. So tier limits and then anti-tier limits, which is cash tier more or less. FTK decks are just not good enough when we have cards like Herald of the Orange Light as well as the Shufflers, Havnus, stuff playing on our opponent's turn. Nope, FTK decks are just not there. So yeah, this is really, really interesting. Once again, this was the unlimited tournament with absolutely zero ban list. Every card at three. Are you guys really, really interested in this format? What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm just really, really interested to see what happens so far. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that like button and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.